Welcome to the complete animation of Stella from Balto 3 Wings of Change. I gotta be honest, this is one of the most uncomfortable projects I have ever worked on. It... It... It was painful to start working on this. And I guess that, that may, like, uh, you should ask the question, why did I subject myself to this? Nobody paid me to do it. Um, some people asked me to do it. I have no idea why someone would want this out of all things. But, yeah, so... Uh, this character design is... J like... It just made me cringe the entire time I started this. Like, I was so uncomfortable for so much of doing this. But then the weirdest thing happened. I started to become less uncomfortable. And by the time I was finished, it was just, you know, another complete animation project. And that is how I decided that um, I can be desensitized to just about anything, even this character design. So let, let's talk about it. It's like Boris, he's a goose and his whole, you know, design was, came from the original, um, Balto that came out in 1995 and, you know, he works. And so... Like, what do you do to make a female, like, a, not really version, but, like, a female goose that, you know, fits? Oh, wow, they, yeah. Um, first, like, so much about it just makes me uncomfortable. It, it just, and then the way they make her move and the way that she acts. <sighs> like, I want to know. Who thought this was a good idea? Like when they were writing this movie, where did where did this come from? Like and Balto three, like I think Balto three, you know, sans Stella, is actually a pretty well decent movie. Like as far as direct to video sequels go, like you could do a whole lot worse, and they did with Balto two. Like. Balto 2 was uh, like a confused mishmash of so many ideas and it didn't really none of it really stuck and visually Balto 2 had a lot of issues it was like they were you could tell that they were still trying to figure out the whole 2D but done all digitally pipeline and yeah, so Balto 2 is a rough movie, and even if it was well animated, even if it had better visuals, it would still have the crazy story. Uh, but Balto 3, on the other hand, like, it, it started off being a much more simple story. Like, basically, there is one major plot line, and everything else sort of revolves around it, and it works. It's pretty good. It plays to the strengths of the first one while still expanding everything. Um, kind of wish we could have seen, you know, some more characters from the the first film. But, yeah, so... When, when they were writing that, where did they decide that Stella should be there? And then when they decided that she should, who decided she should look like this? Ugh. And who decided that she should act the way that she does? Because, like, the big thing about Stella is she is so forward. Like, it, it's, it, it makes me uncomfortable, basically. Um, like, you know, I'm in a relationship. I've got a girlfriend. I don't know how I would react if my girlfriend, you know, took the reins of the relationship and, like, 
acted like Stella. Yo, I really have no idea. But, you know, like, I will give this show one thing. You know, one of the th good things about art is it allows whoever experiences the art to explore ideas and situations and feelings that they have a good chance of never having in their entire life. And there's, like, basically no chance that I will ever be in a relationship with a woman that, you know, practically throws herself at me the way Stella does. And the way I react to it, um, with just cringe and wince and, you know, get me out of here, you know, that, that might just be the way I would react to it in real life. Um, one of the things that they did with Stella's design is they did the inexplicable thing. They also did this, uh, not they, like, a totally different studio and all that, but they did what was done in Happy Feet, where it's just, oh, female birds? Just throw a, throw a, not even a suggestion, throw a bosom on them. And it's like, that really doesn't make sense. <sighs> And it also looks a little tacked on, because it is. Ugh. And... Yeah, I think that the the best parts of Stella are the parts that are here. Um, when she basically is teaming up with Balto. Because, you know, she she's able to show that yeah she she can do stuff she's a competent flyer and isn't a total klutz and she isn't she kind of puts on a ton of airs for boris it's weird um but yeah like when when she's just with balto like i guess that's when she becomes normal i guess so yeah um that's another thing. Like, this isn't this video isn't about Balto him, himself, but I I do feel the need to just say that in Balto two, he kind of felt like like he felt as lost and mixed up as the rest of the movie. But in this one, you know things are actually going pretty well. And they also fixed his design. Um, I'm not the only one who noticed it, but, you know, Balto had those trademark yellow eyes in the first movie. But then they gave him wide eyes in Balto 2. But now his col his eyes are back to the color they were in the first movie. Like, and just visually, everything is so much more competent in Balto 3. The... The uh, technical aspect of it all, like the re the digital a uh, assets are of a higher resolution, and the actual like animation of it all, like these better character models and everything, they actually move better. It's <sighs> part of me wants to know what would have happened if they made Balto two after making Balto three. So it's like, we get Balto 3 exactly as it is now, but then we get Balto 2 after that. How would things have changed? Like, it probably would have been better written, that's for sure. But just having better visuals. But um, at the moment, I'm also working on the complete animation of Alu, you know, the, the main character from Balto 2. And if you can look past the low-resolution issues um there's actually some pretty good character animation in the second one so yeah and the big thing is here in balto 3 the 3d effects work so much better like you can still tell that they're you know cg objects being used in this 2d world but the uh, but it works better. Not so in Balto 2. Holy cow, in Balto 2, like, the CG in there was so bad. Especially, like, the weird dream sequences and, like, 
when the uh, camera was panning around some totem pole. Like, really bad CG. So, yeah. Um, but I, I, I guess I still haven't um, answered the question, why did I make this video? Of all videos, the complete animation of Stella. Why did I do that? And I think... The re one of the reasons why is because I felt the need to face my fears. Like, ever since I first watched this show when I was a lot younger, the whole Stella thing, like, really made me uncomfortable. And I'm just like, you know what? I bet if I make a video where I have to look at her every frame in the entire movie... Maybe, maybe I can get over what scares me. And it, it kind of worked. Um, I think I'm ready to just sit down and watch this movie pretty soon. Because now that I've faced my fears and I know exactly what Stella has in store, I think I'll be ready to watch this movie and hopefully not cringe so hard that I lose track of what I'm watching. Or feel like I need to fast forward through some bits. I guess it is interesting. Um, Balto 3 is a musical, whereas the first one wasn't. I guess the second one had some songs as well. But yeah, like I've always I always appreciated that Balto, the original film, wasn't a musical. It was. It was like it was able to do everything it did without, you know, characters breaking out into song. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I love musicals as much as the next guy. Like, some of my favorite Disney movies are musicals. But there is something to be said for this, uh, for Amblimation making a movie that wasn't a musical. But then, when they cut, when it comes to this, um, this direct to video sequel, the third one they do make it a musical but there's only there's not a ton of songs so and then they just had to make it so that one of the songs was sung by Stella <laughs> and like the song had just such like for back of a lack of a better term sensual lyrics and imagery it's like, yeah. So, I don't know if I will ever like Stella as a character. Beyond just, like, you know, the way she was written and the way she voice acted. You know, no shade against the voice actress. But just everything about her design and the things that they made her do in the story i don't know if i'll ever be a fan of that but hopefully now that i've made this video i will have come to terms with it and i'll be able to finally rewatch this movie sometime and not be i don't know words fail me One of the one of the things that I really like about Balto 3 is the way that they expanded like everything about Gnome. It's like they visually especially like this movie has parts that take place in the summer in Gnome. And, you know, it actually looks pretty nice when it's all green. Because the first movie was all winter. And and it, it did it well. Like, Balto pro still has some of the best um, snow effects ever made, ever done in a 2D movie. Um, but yeah, so I would say that... Balto 3 is the real sequel. And I'm not saying like it's some masterpiece or anything. I'm I'm not trying to say that Balto 3 is better than it is, but what I am trying to say is that 
it's surprisingly good, all things considered. Especially considering Balto 2, which came out before. And to be honest, I think I would have rather had, you know, a Balto 4 rather than another one of the Land Before Times. It's like, wouldn't it be nice to have Balto 4 and there's only 13 Land Before Time movies instead of 14? They could get rid of... um. The Great Day of Flyers. That one wasn't very good. But yeah, thanks for sticking around this particularly rambling video. Thanks for watching.